Today we're going to go over a few different patches on the Zoya, explaining logic, the ideas, how eventually it became what it is on patch storage. This is the first patch I made after receiving the Zoya. It's called Dirty Verb. It's mostly made of effects modules, but it has some analysis in there as well to make it a little more interesting. Let's go through the signal path. So we have audio inputs left and right. So the audio input is going into a compressor set to minus 40. Then the compressor splits into two different destinations. First is the vibrato. Second is the pitch detector. So the pitch detector is going to pick up on the individual notes that I'm playing from the compressor output and translate them into CV signals that represent a certain pitch. The pitch then goes out to the frequency of a ring modulator. So the ring modulator frequency is going to be changed depending on what input I feed it. The compressor is there to enhance the audio. So going back to the original destination, the vibrato, the vibrato is set to a direct, um, which will be also modulating by the pitch out from the pitch detector. So the vibrato direct signal CV is going to be alternating based on my notes. There's also a width parameter, and it's being fed into two different outputs. First is the ghost verb, the basis of the patch. Second is the envelope follower, which will analyze the incoming envelope signal, convert to CV, that's going to be modulating the delay mod depth. So the harder that I use my pick on my guitar, or the harder I press a key on a synthesizer, that will influence the delay modulation depth. So after the ghost verb, it goes directly into the delay, as well as the ring mod. So we'll go over the delay first. Delay is the delay with mod um, set to mono. Uh, short delay time, low feedback, moderate rate, and a 50% mix. The ring mod frequency, again, is being fed by the pitch detector with a low mix. Then that's getting fed back into the delay. So it goes ghost verb, delay, ghost verb, ring mod, ring mod, delay. Right, so the, the delay is being fed to signals at the same time. Then the delay goes out to an overdrive distortion. Right, I've had it, I have it set for a moderate gain, medium gain. Then that goes out to the dual outputs. And there's a slight attenuation of the signal for the output gain. Let's go into some of the complexities of this patch. So we have a couple analysis modules controlling different things. As I said, the pitch detector is both controlling the ring mod frequency and the vibrato direct CV. The envelope follower is being fed by the vibrato and the delay, or I'm sorry, and the ghost verb. The envelope follower then hits the modulation, uh, the delay modulation depth. So as I both use a higher pick attack and change pitches on my guitar or synth, it will affect the vibrato, mo modulation, frequency, ring mod, and overall tone of the reverb going into the distortion. So it's a whole mess of effects, hence why I call it the dirty verb. Finally, let's go over the stomp switches. So the stomp switches, we have left, right, and center. The left stomp it controls the ghost verb decay slash feedback. If I hold it down, it's set to momentary, it's going to directly increase to 100% feedback, which will slowly build up over time. Then we have the, the switching to um, analog mode. The middle stomp controls the delay feedback, which will increase the number of repeats as I hold it down momentarily. And then finally, we have a latching switch on the right which increases the input gain 
from 6 to 12 dBs. So we get slightly higher gain going into um, the final output after the reverb. Okay, so that's my first patch. Uh, it's not too complicated. Uh, most of it is effects modules and some analysis. There's not too much CV being thrown around, but the idea is, is pretty simple and it was a great first patch to start with. Next we're gonna talk about panning looper, which I renamed to grain looper after adding the granular module that was introduced in 1.03. And just as a note, this is using 1.03 firmware at the time of this recording. So panning looper is a dual channel looper with both reverse and forward options set to uh, no pitch change, just 100% reverse and 50% forward. So the slower uh, octave down signal will be going forward and the regular signal will be reversed through the looper. There's also a granular section. There's a two channel granular module which picks up a pitch uh, octave up or fifth up or octave down or fifth down, depending on a couple different options. They get mixed and sent to a final reverb for hitting the output. That's the basic of the signal, let's go into the details. So the audio inputs go directly into the looping section. We have looper one, which is set to 100% reverse. I have this push button set to change the reverse slash forward option on the looper, but I always keep it at one, so it's always reverse. Then I have the second looper, which is set to an octave down, forward. All right, so those two get mixed into a mixer and panned left and right 60-40. So you get this wavering panning effects with the looping. Then the looper goes into the reverb, which is a reverb light to save some CPU, and then straight to the outputs. So that's the looper. The audio signal also goes into a VCA. This VCA goes directly to the output, but I have this value module here, which I have starred, which will control the VCA level allowing drive signal through. So if you want full drag signal through, set it to one, this will light up. If you want no drag signal, set it to zero, and it'll be diminished. So the audio, in addition to going through the VCAs, the VCA and the two loopers also hits two granular sections. So the left signal goes through uh, a grain set to either zero plus octave or plus fifth. The right audio goes through zero minus octave or minus fifth. The idea here is that this gives a sort of tremolo effect with the different pitches going on between the panned grains. So the output of the granular section goes to another mixer, so they get mixed with each other and sent directly to the reverb and output. All right, so let's talk about this sequencer selection I have here. So I have it set to A0, A1, E1, along with this invert CV. So we're going to get to some of the CV connections here. So generally when you're trying to create patches and you want to change settings on the fly with the foot switch or with the push button or whatever you want to use to alternate the selection, you can use an audio in or out switch or a CV in slash out switch, which works if you only have two channels. And that's the easiest way, easier way to go through it. If you have more than two channels and you want to make things work on the fly with a momentary stomp switch or a push button, you can use a sequencer. All right, so the sequencer, we could just use the CV out option to change the values where we want them. All right, so if I set, if I push down on the encoder, it changes from numericals to notes that make things a little easier if we want to do different pitches, say, for a looper or granular. All right, so A0 is always the same value of the pitch that it's set to, so A0 will be 100% in this case. A1 is an octave above 100%. E1 is a fifth above, right? So we can create different pitch shiftings based on the values of the sequencer 
CV signals. The invert is to allow us to get the negative side of those pitches. So because I set the, the grains to be both plus octave and plus fifth and minus octave and minus fifth, I need the invert module to get me there. All right, so I send the CV to the invert as well as back to the pitch of the grain. All right, so, and I have it set to the right stomp switch will momentarily increase the sequence. So we get now plus octave or 12, and then seventh, which is a fifth up. Same thing happens on the opposite side with the um, negative grain, right? So it's minus a fifth or minus seven semitones, and then minus the whole octave. Like I said, we can use the sequencer output to drive multi switches where you have more than two destinations or more than two um, settings you want to control. The left stomp activates the looper. The loopers are both set to eight seconds each, so you hold down the left stomp switch as long as you want to record. When you lift, it will stop recording. The middle stomp is for freezing the grains. So with the granular module, you can freeze the grains or whatever pitch uh, or position that they're at. So if I stomp on the middle stomp switch, then these change to blue, and now they're frozen at whatever audio was input. So it acts as another looper in this case. And this middle, this uh, LED down here is lit up to indicate that we have stomped the middle switch. Finally, we have the right stomp, which is a sequencer. So I have this UI button that also gets sent CV signal from the sequencer that changes color depending on the position I'm in. So in my case, blank is zero, white is plus octave or 12 semitones and magenta is seven semitones or a fifth. So I can easily identify what setting I'm on based on the sequencer. All right, so that's panning looper or grain looper. It's a little more complex than my original patch because it involves more CV signals and a little more complex routing, but the idea is simple. We have a couple different audio modules. We have some CV signals modulating parameters to get our desired output. The next patch I want to talk about is called Synthetron, which is based on the Red Witch Synthetron synthesizer and uh, filter pedal. It basically tracks your guitar input to make a synthesizer with a fuzz tone that's either an octave up, the same octave, an octave down, or two octaves down, mixed in an oscillator one and oscillator two. There's also a dry section, which includes a tremolo, and a filter section which includes a sample and holds or a envelope filter. So for the purposes of this patch, I implemented almost everything in the original pedal. There's the two oscillators with the appropriate pitch tracking. There is a VCA driven tremolo effect on the dry signal and there's an envelope filter. I have not had the chance to implement the sample and hold section of the pedal yet. Now let's look at the routing here. So we have audio input, this one's going to a couple different destinations. So remember, we need to track our guitar signal into a synthesized oscillator. So it's a little more complicated. So we're going from the audio input to a pitch detector, which we discussed in the first patch. That will determine the pitch output from our guitar tracking. And due to how, it's, how the pitch tracking works, it works better monophonically. So if you try to throw chords at this, it's not going to work as well as just trying individual notes. All right, so the pitch detector output goes to a slew limiter, which is a CV module, which essentially acts as sort of a quasi expression pedal in certain cases. So it gets a CV input, you have a rising time, a falling time, and then finally the output. So when you enter in the pitch signal, it will take a certain lag to get to its you know, peak, and then it'll fall back down to zero. Then the slew limiter outputs to the oscillator frequency. Oscillator frequency, like we discussed in the previous looping patch, will determine the pitch of the note above, away, above below, or the same as you're playing. So if I enter in, you know, in this case, A0, since I'm not playing anything, it will 
directly route to A0 for other cases, unless I, I have other signals driving that pitch up or down, which I do for oscillator one. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so the audio goes to the pitch detector, which goes to the slew limiter, which goes to the two oscillators. That determines the pitch. The audio output also goes to an envelope follower, which we discussed in the first patch, that tracks the envelope of your signal and outputs a CV signal somewhere else. Right, so there's a rise time and a fall time, just the same as the uh, slew limiter, and we're going to be outputting that CV elsewhere. In this case, we're directing it to a VCA gate. So we're using the envelope follower of the input guitar signal to open up the VCA gate to let the oscillator signal come through. From the oscillators, they go to a mixer. We have an audio balance mixer here, which takes the, essentially balances the signals or mixes the signals together. We have it set to 50%. But we also have a value module, which I have starred on the patch, that will alternate between 0.25 and 0.75. All right, so I just set that by myself. You can change that if you'd like on the patch, um, but just as a way to keep both in the loop. If I want to go from zero to one, it goes from only 25 to 75. And I do that by limiting the connection strength between the two modules. So if I limit it to 50%, then it's only going to, you know, increase or decrease 50% of the range of the uh, destination. The output of the balance module goes to an S, a state variable filter with a low pass output. So as we see, the oscillators are always putting out sound because that's how they work. So if I just let it sit without a VCA, you would always hear the oscillator. So that's why you need a VCA to limit the amount of times that the oscillator comes through. So you need to lift the gate somehow, which is where the envelope follower comes. The filter has a set frequency, which you can change. It also has a resonance or Q um, that is logarithmic. As you increase the resonance, it will start getting you know, nastier and nastier as you up that value. The filter goes into the VCA, as I've mentioned before, that gets lifted by the envelope follower. The VCA goes into our case a fuzz because we want a more fuzz oscillator tone to mimic the original pedal. Uh, the fuzz is set to a moderate 12 decibel input gain um, with some output reduction to make sure their signal is equal going in and out. Then the fuzz goes into another audio balance. So this is what we're, we're, we'll pause for a second. All right, so that's all with the oscillator slash wet side right, of the pedal. We still need the dry side to influence the tremolo and the envelope filter. And then at the end, we also need the oscillator to be affected by the envelope filter. So this is where it gets a little interesting. So we have a value module, which will actually move down, that is does the same thing as the previous value module on the front page. This controls the mix between dry and wet signal, or wet signal in this case being the oscillators. Right, so let's talk about the pitches on the different oscillator settings and why this one is a one, where the others are a zero. So we actually have a sequencer down here to determine four different outputs based on CV. We have the left stop driving the different sequencers, All right? So we're going from A1 to A0. And then this lights up depending on which one we're actually indicating. All right, so it'll send the CV signal first to oscillator one. Now for us to get the second octave down on the second oscillator, we need to be a little clever. So we're actually using the gate of the, um, the stomp switch, which is driving the gate, to also increase a multiplier module. Multiplier module is from the control module section. You can put the output of a CV multiplier to influence the CV connection strength between two, de two destinations, with the middle portion being either zero or one, or some value in between to determine that connection strength, which is an easier way to do it than pressing the two pieces together and then alternating them. Right, so we're using the sequencer 
gate to increase the multiplier to one. But we also have a CV input, which we hard coded to 0.1 or A1. All right, so we want a second octave below our original pitch. So this means that when we have 0.1 times one, it outputs 0.1, right? That's basic multiplication. Then we take the output of the multiplier to go into a CV invert, because we want to put an octave down. So we get minus one, that's going to the second oscillator. To get the first octave down, we take a CV invert at 0.1, invert it and then drive it to the second oscillator. So in this case, when you see the magenta switch on, that's indicating that we're sending two octaves below on the second oscillator. When you see the blue LED in the left position on, we're sending positive octave to the first oscillator. If you don't, then it's no octaves, it's the same pitch. So this gives us four different discrete settings. So either a combination of plus one, minus two, plus one, minus one, zero, minus two, zero, minus one. Right? And to do that, we used the sequencer output, the stomp switch, a multiplier, and a couple CV invert modules to get us there. Now we'll move on to the dry signal, back to where we were before. For the dry side, we still need a tremolo. Right, we still need that that dry mix with a VCA driven tremolo. All right, so we're going to take the audio input and go to an audio out switch. So we have an input, we want to send it to two different outputs and we need a CV signal to switch between the channel selections. Channel one sends it to the mix. All right, so we don't want any tremolo on this. We just want to take the dry signal and mix it with the oscillators. So we send channel one to the mix. Channel two goes to a VCA, right? We're trying to make a tremolo here. So we use a VCA to alternate the levels to get dips in volume. The VCA level is driven by an LFO, right? An LFO is the basic component of a control module. You take some LFO speed, you put it into a multiplier, you have some gates in the multiplier that will determine whether or not you turn that on or off. In our case, we're gonna use the middle switch to turn it on. The middle switch will control channel two selection. So we go from channel one to channel two, and that will also turn on the multiplier input to allow the tremolo to come through. So then you, we see we're alternating between minus one and zero, and that will influence our tremolo. So that goes into now the mix. So the output of this second audio balance goes into a couple different destinations. It goes into an audio in switch. An audio in switch takes two inputs with a channel selector that swaps between the two and then has one output. All right, so we send the balance of dry and wet to both the audio in switch and the envelope filter. We set the second channel of the audio in switch to the envelope filter and then we have a channel selection that swaps between the two. Since we want this in stereo, we have a final module, which is a stereo spread, which basically splits the model signal into two stereo outputs. Then you have a some sort of delay time to do that. Uh, you can use this to do like a chorusing effect, kind of like how the DC2 does it. Then we finally have the stereo spread output to the audio outputs. Finally, we have these three indicators on the top to indicate the presence of certain sum switches being present. I like to have that as sort of a extra feature on the front page so you know what's going on. All right, so red indicates that we've turned on the envelope filter. Yellow indicates we turn on the tremolo. And again, magenta indicates the status of the sequencer in addition to these three LEDs on the bottom.